What's cracking guys, Omar Esau here, back with another video talking about pull-ups. As you guys probably know, I've made it a goal this year, one of my goals, several goals, uh, to do 15,000 pull-ups this year over 365 days. Why? Because I feel that personally for back development, pull-ups are pretty much your best choice. And there's reasons behind that. I made a previous video discussing pull-ups, how to become better at them. This is a sequel because that was a super popular video. This video is going to build upon that previous video, so I'll link it in the description. This one I want to talk about optimal back development using pull-ups because it's true I do feel that pull-ups are phenomenal for building your back but when done correctly and there are many mistakes that individuals can make which is why a lot of people will tend to gravitate towards you know pull down machines because it's a machine it's kind of in a straight path it's easier to feel in your lats but when pull-ups are done effectively huh, I think there's nothing better so let's get to it let's talk about some of the key tips tip number one I want to talk about actual grip for some beginners, your grip will be the limiting issue. That's probably how you actually grip the bar itself. So what we'll notice with most individuals, they'll grip the bar just starting with their fingers and kind of wrap it around like so. So it's not really a firm, solid grip. And what will end up happening, their elbow will get outside of the wrist. So when they pull up because it's weak, their elbow isn't externally rotated, their shoulder isn't externally rotated. What happens, their elbow gets outside of the wrist. What you want to do instead is grab it with the palm of your hand, the bar itself, wrap your fingers around, you'll feel a greater stretch in your lap, and then get into position. And we're gonna talk about that optimal lap position in just one second, but it all starts with how you grip the bar. So don't grip it with your fingers, grip it with your palm, and then rotate it down. You'll automatically, you should, feel a greater stretch in your lats a little bit. From there, what we want to focus on, we want to focus on externally rotating with the shoulders. Here's what I mean. We want to get a stretch with the lats at the bottom position. What you're gonna do, you're gonna make sure that you lock out every single rep to start. But what you'll see a lot of guys do, they'll internally rotate because they don't have that mobility, they'll kind of round forward, their traps will take over, they'll kind of shrug up, and they're not in that straight bar path. When we talk about doing pull-ups or doing them correctly, what we wanna do, we wanna bring the chest to the bar. So I'm gonna show a side view right now. I'm exaggerating it a little bit to demonstrate the point. You wanna pull pretty much in a straightest line as you're pulling yourself up. And what that means is that your lat is gonna be more optimally engaged throughout the movement. So you want the chest towards the bar. You don't wanna round forward. You wanna use those big lats. So we want our chest up, chest towards the bar. So it starts with a nice firm grip, and then what we're gonna do from there, we're gonna make sure when we initiate the pull that we're rotating to keep our chest up. And what that is going to do, it's gonna allow you to recruit your lat a little bit more. Think about it, if you internally rotate and you kinda of shrug your shoulders up, as you pull up, it's gonna use less of your lat and more of your other back muscles. We're talking about growing the lats when it comes to pull-ups. And lats are very important when it comes to deadlift and a lot of different movements. They're a very important muscle group. So, for us, we start with a really solid grip, right? Palm, and then rotate down, feel that stretch in our lats. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna externally rotate with our shoulders, keeping our chest up as we pull towards the bar. From there, we wanna make sure that our body is pretty much straight. So, that means our core is engaged. What you'll notice with a lot of individuals, when they do a lot of repetitions, because they don't have that core tightness, they'll be flopping all over the place. They look like a fish out of water, and it looks disgusting, let's eliminate it. You wanna be tight, you want your core braced, and you want to be pulling in that straight line. So for optimal lat recruitment, we want a firm grip, starting with the palms, so you feel that stretch in your lats, externally rotate with the shoulders, and then from there, we want to bring the chest towards the bar, pulling in a straight line. A cue that can work for a lot of individuals is flaring your lats, to get that sensation of your chest being up, because automatically when you flare your lats, your chest will come up. So instead of internally rotating, you're flaring, externally rotating with your shoulder, and your shoulder blades are slightly retracted. Then you pull yourself up, retracting the shoulder blades as you come up. So that sensation, that feeling of squeezing and pulling is what you should be feeling as you execute the movement. Now, I wanna talk about the actual pull-up itself because a lot of people have questions, hey, how do I become better? And I'll make another video on that because that is a whole other video, pull-up progressions, how to become better. Uh, but for this video, I wanna talk about three different types of pull-ups that you can execute. The first one would be a dead stop pull-up. And what that means is that every single repetition, you'll lock out with the elbows, feel that complete stretch with the lat, hang at the bottom for just a split second, and then pull yourself back up. This Make sure that you are actually doing a complete range of motion. A lot of guys, let's face it, we'll bang in a lot of reps and what will happen, will kind of decrease that range of motion over time. And when you start cheating like that, cheating out of the full range, you're cheating yourself out of more muscle growth. 
The second variation that you can do after that is when you want to get constant tension in that area. You're essentially in a groove because you're pulling up, down, up, down, it feels good. From there after that you could stop doing the dead hang pull up. So you just move in a continuous motion, up, down, up, down, and you just knock out several repetitions. Those are the ones that you'll see me do on a regular basis when it comes to the pull ups that I perform you know, every single week when I do 100 per day. The third variation would be for those that kind of want to work on keeping torso tightness, they want to work on pulling in a straight line, and that would be working on a slower eccentric. So if you normally bring it down maybe in just half a second, you double that time, that time under tension. And there are positive effects or positive benefits towards doing a slow eccentric. So when you're pulling yourself up, you go at a normal speed, on the way down, you take your time, making sure that you feel your last, you're in that good position, and then you pull yourself back up. Three different variations, three different uses. The first one, when you want to do from a dead hang, you want to guarantee you have a full stretch with the lats, which once again can be beneficial for growth, and also guarantee you got that full range of motion. I would do that one time per week, that style of pull up. The second one would be the constant tension, right, where you're just banging out pull ups. That I'll do another time per week. Your third final time, third and final time, I would do that slower eccentric. One, that can lead to more growth, but two, what I'll do for you guys, when you really start doing pull-ups or a lot of pull-ups, you'll notice you're kind of swinging all over the place. This will actually work your core. And what you might notice after you do slow eccentrics, one session, right, you're gonna have to do less reps, but it's gonna be longer the total set because you're doing those slower eccentrics, your core probably will be sore the next day. And really, if you wanna be able to hammer out a lot of pull-ups and really you know, provide a stimulus for growth, controlling the eccentric and learning how to brace with that core as you do a pull-up is very important. These slow eccentrics help teach that. Pull-ups and the proper variation, so neutral pull-ups and champs, I feel personally are the best lat developers that you can do in terms of a single exercise. It all depends on how you do them, however, and so we want to set up the movement to try and optimally target that area. So try these little tweaks. Let me know, you know, your progress, how it actually feels. If you want to see that third video in terms of pull-up progressions, because there is a difference between going for maximal repetition, so how many reps you could do in one set, and then becoming stronger with the pull-ups, so you're using weighted pull-ups. Make sure to like this video. If it gets over 3,000 likes, I will make the third and final installment of this trilogy all about becoming better and stronger with pull-ups to grow a bigger pair of lats. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like this video, make sure to like the damn video, and I'll be seeing all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace.